Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make a quick video to help you with um, a problem type in homework seven that was brought to my attention um, that I hadn't covered yet. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that you had the tools um, to solve this problem because it is um, a bit of a complicated one. It um, synthesizes a lot of the things that we've done so far this term. Okay, so there are things that look like this. Again, this is a parallel parking example. We've got a forward trig function, we've got a backward trig function. They are composed together and we're going to start on the inside and work our way out. Now, the wrinkle here that makes this one more difficult is that the angle that you're given, this 8 pi over 5 here, is not on the unit circle. Now, normally, if we have something that's not on the unit circle, we draw a triangle to complete that. However, we won't be able to draw a triangle here because this is an angle, not a ratio. Uh, we need a ratio to be able to draw a triangle. So what do we do if we have an angle that's not on the unit circle? Well, we're going to have to think a little harder about this. Okay, so 8 pi over 5 is an angle. It's going to go into cosine here, and we are going to get a ratio of not opposite, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse because it's cosine. We're going to get adjacent over hypotenuse, that ratio out, and then we're going to take the inverse cosine of it. Now, I'm not going to know exactly what that adjacent over hypotenuse ratio is because this uh, angle does not live on the unit circle, but that's okay. We're going to kind of fight through this. So, all right, let's figure out where 8 pi over 5 lives. So in order to figure out, I'm just going to label this. So the angle that we're trying to figure out is 8 pi over 5. And I want to know where this thing lives. So in order to figure out where you have a, a, an angle with a radian measure and you don't know where it lives, we're going to put everything into um, equivalent fractions with a common denominator. And so we just need to figure out what that common denominator is. So to get a common denominator between pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and 8 pi over 5, our common denominator will be 10. So I'm going to put all of these fractions as an equivalent fraction over 10. So we'll start with what we're given, 8 pi over 5. To get a common denominator of 10, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. So 8 pi over 5 is 16 pi over 10. So we got to figure out where this thing is. Uh, pi over 2 is 5 pi over 10. Pi over 1 is 10 pi over 10. 3 pi over 2 is 15 pi over 10. And 2 pi is 20 pi over 10. And we got to figure out where this angle theta, 16 pi over 10, lives. Now that I have everything in terms of uh, a common denominator, I know it's going to be between 15 pi and 20 pi over 10. So it's going to be down here in quadrant 4. So this is our 16 pi over 10. Um, that's our angle theta that we started with. So there's our angle theta um, that's going into this. Now, since this is in quadrant 4, uh, is this adjacent over hypotenuse ratio that comes out of cosine, is that going to be positive or negative? Well, let's see, because all students take calculus in quadrant four, cosine is positive, which means the ratio that we get out of here is going to be positive. When I put the quadrant four angle of eight pi over five into cosine, I'm going to get a positive ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse out. I don't know exactly what that ratio is going to be, but that's okay. I know it's going to be positive. Okay, great. Now, how does that help us? Well, I know that since that ratio is positive, if I take the arc cosine of a positive angle, uh, or a positive ratio, sorry, I know that the angle that I get out of here will live in quadrant 1. Because if I put a positive ratio into arc cosine, I get an angle in quadrant one out. Now, what angle is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the angle in quadrant one 
that has the same adjacent over hypotenuse ratio as this angle that we just did, which means we're basically going to take this triangle and put it in the first quadrant. So I need to figure out what this angle is. In order to figure out what that angle is, I need to know what my reference angle here is. So it's going to be the angle in quadrant one that has the same uh, reference angle as eight pi over five. So we got to figure out what that reference angle is. Well, my reference angle here is the distance between our given angle, 16 pi over 10, and this x-axis, uh, which is 20 pi over 10. The distance here between 16 pi over 10 and 20 pi over 10, that's a difference of 4 pi over 10 or 2 pi over 5. That's my reference angle. That's the angle that I'm going to put here in quadrant 1, which means the angle in quadrant 1 with a reference angle of 2 pi over 5 is, in fact, 2 pi over 5. That is going to be the angle that comes out of here. So in this case, this working these problems is all about quadrants. You have to figure out um, what quadrant your original is in. And then if that implies that the ratio is going to be positive or negative, and then figure out which quadrant um, the answer will live in. So let's try another one to try to solidify this. Okay, so let's come to this one. If I need to find the inverse sine of the sine of negative seven pi over five. Okay, so again, I know set this negative seven pi over five, that does not live on the unit circle, um, but I'm gonna take the sine of that angle and I'm gonna get some opposite over hypotenuse ratio, and then I'm gonna have to take the inverse sine of that. So the first thing I need to figure out is where negative 7 pi over 5 lives so that I know whether or not the sine of that angle is positive or negative. Okay, so let's figure out. So theta is negative 7 pi over 5. We got to figure out where that lives. So let's again start. Figuring this out, and we're going to make everything into equivalent fractions with the same denominator. I'm kind of giving this away, but the denominator that would be common to everything is 10. So our original angle is negative 7 pi over 5. To get a denominator of 10, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. So my angle is negative 14 pi over 10. Pi over 2 is 5 pi over 10. Pi over 1 is 10 pi over 10. 3 pi over 2 is 15 pi over 10. And 2 pi is 20 pi over 10. Okay, so negative 14 pi over 10. Um, some of you are really good at working with negative angles. Um, if, if that's not you, that's okay. If you can do this with negative angles, go right ahead. I have no problem with that. Um, but if negative angles aren't your thing and you have trouble with that, I'm going to bring this negatively rotating angle. Um, I'm going to find a positively rotating coterminal angle with it so that I can better figure out where this thing lives because my brain doesn't like negatively rotating angles. So to turn this into a positively rotating uh, coterminal angle, I'm going to add 2 pi, and when I do that, I'm going to get negative 14 pi over 10, and when I add 2 pi, that is adding 20 pi over 10, which means overall this is 6 pi over 10. That's a 10 down here. Try to make that so we can read it. Okay, so this negative 14 pi over 10, that is coterminal with 6 pi over 10. And now that everything is positively rotating, 6 pi over 10 is up here somewhere. So that is where 
6 pi over 10 is. Now, technically, this is that 6 pi over 10 angle, but our original angle is uh, our theta of, oops, sorry, I'm all out of whack. So this 6 pi over 10 is this guy. That's our positively rotating angle, um, but gotta get this all situated here to switch colors. Okay, um, but the original was negative 14 pi over 10, so that's the negatively rotating part here. Um, technically, they end at the same spot, so they're going to serve the same purpose because right now we just got to figure out which quadrant we're in. I just wanted to point out the difference between what we were given and the angle that I'm using, the positively rotating one. Um, so either way, this angle that we're dealing with lives in quadrant two. So since negative seven pi over five is in quadrant two, is the sine of negative seven pi over five, this ratio, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, all students take calculus. It's here in quadrant two, which means this is going to be a positive ratio again. And so since this is a positive ratio, I know the answer here is going to live in quadrant one. Um, when I take the arc sine of a positive ratio, it gives me an angle in quadrant one. And the angle that it's going to give me is going to have the same reference angle as the angle that we started with, this 7 pi over 5. So we got to figure out what this reference angle is. Our reference angle is right here. And so to figure out what that angle is, that's the distance between 6 pi over 10 and 10 pi over 10. That angle is 4 pi over 10 or 2 pi over 5. So the answer that I get out of here is going to be an answer in quadrant 1 with a reference angle of 2 pi over 5. That means 2 pi over 5 will be our solution. All right. Um, hopefully that helps. These were both positive. Um, so hopefully they gave you a good idea. I'm, I'm going to run through one more um, that won't be in that same quadrant. So how about I also give you, we'll do the arc sine of the sine of negative 4 pi over 9. We'll just do this one quick um, as well. Okay, so again, to start with these, this is our angle theta, and we have to figure out where this lives. So theta is negative 4 pi over 9. So we are going to figure out where this thing lives. So our common denominator is going to be 18. So we're going to put everything over 18. And so what we're given is going to be negative 8 pi over 18. Uh, pi over 2 is 9 pi over 18. Pi is 18 pi over 18. 3 pi over 2 is 27 pi over 18. And 2 pi is 36 pi over 18. Okay, and again, this is negative. My brain does not like working with negative angles. If yours does, that's totally fine. You can work with that. Um, so I'm going to add 2 pi to this to get a positive coterminal angle. This is going to be negative pi over 18 plus 2 pi, which is 36 pi over 18. That means the positively rotating coterminal angle here is 28 pi over 18. Okay, so where is 28 pi over 18? Well, that's between 27 and 36 pi over 18. So we're down here in quadrant four. So this is 28 pi over 18. Um, that's the positively rotating version of our angle. So this lives in quadrant four. 
Okay, so now that we know that our original angle lived in quadrant four, that means when I take the sine of that angle, the ratio that I get out opposite over hypotenuse, is it gonna be positive or negative? Well, since all students take calculus, here in quadrant four, cosine is positive, but everything else is negative, which means that our sine ratio here is going to be negative. So if I take the arc sine of a negative ratio, that's going to spit us out into quadrant four, because arc sine lives in quadrants one and four between negative pi over two and pi over two. And so now we just need to figure out which angle in quadrant four um, we will have. And so it's going to be the angle in quadrant four that has a reference angle that matches the one that we were given. Our reference angle is right here. And so the, our reference angle is the distance between 28 pi over 18 and 36 pi over 18, which means our reference angle is eight pi over 18 or 4 pi over 9. So that's the size of our reference angle. So the angle that I'm going to get out overall in this problem is the angle in quadrant 4 with a reference angle of 4 pi over 9. And keep in mind that arc sine can only spit us out between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we need to take the negatively rotating angles in quadrant 4. That means what we're going to get out of here is negative 4 pi over 9. Okay, um, so hopefully that helps. Um, you're just going to figure out what quadrant you start in, what quadrant you'll end in, and make sure that you use the same reference angle. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and homework seven is due um, tomorrow, March 14th, Pi Day, at midnight. So um, enjoy some of these problems with a slice of pie, and I will see you on Wednesday.